Konnichiwa Tomodachi. After a six week hiatus, Jeff's Japan vlog is back. I've actually done a lot of stuff over the last six weeks, so I will show you the highlights from the most cool stuff that I've done. Back in mid January, I went with some friends to a sumo tournament in Ryogoku, which is near the middle of Tokyo. And it was my first sumo tournament, so I went in there not really knowing the rules, but it's pretty simple. Basically, one wrestler is trying to either knock the other wrestler down inside the circle or force him out of the circle. That's really all there is to it. The match just lasts from about, about 10 seconds up to maybe a minute if it's really intense. We had got there around 1 p.m., and we didn't realize how many matches there were or that like the prime matches weren't going to be until a lot later. We ended up staying through the end, which was probably 6.30 or 7, uh, around 5, I guess, is when the the premier division started to to come on uh, so you've seen some pictures of just some of the actual matches right here is like an officiating gathering where the officials come to talk about something if it was really close then this is when the premier division actually comes in they do this all big ceremony and it's actually pretty cool to see so it was definitely a good experience um, I probably would go again, not for a while though. Definitely one of the best parts of the match was just being stupid and making bets on matches. We had we had bet a beer on who would win a match when we had no idea what was going on. So we would look at the list of wrestlers, pick one, yell out their name. The, uh, the Japanese people around us actually thought it was pretty amusing because we would just choose someone to root for and and be really hardcore about it. So we were chanting things like, Endo! Endo! Even when Endo wasn't fighting. But that didn't matter. We had a good time, and everybody around us seemed to enjoy the stupid gaijins. After the sumo tournament, I got a little inspiration to, to see if I could make the cut. I'll let you be the judge of whether you think I could compete or not, but I think I've got a pretty good shot. So go <laughs> Anyway, after the sumo tournament, we I went to uh, Tokyo Skytree to check that out. So here's some pictures from that. So this is Tokyo Skytree. Some fun facts: it is the tallest tower in the world, and at 2,080 feet, it is the second tallest structure in the world, only behind Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It is a broadcasting tower for television and radio, and they built it because Tokyo Tower, which used to be the tallest building in Tokyo, is blocked by so many buildings around it now that they needed a taller tower to be able to fully broadcast all the digital stuff in Tokyo now. Pretty cool stuff. They've really geared Tokyo Skytree to tourists. There's tons and tons of shopping. There's an aquarium. So we went and checked out the aquarium. And honestly, it wasn't really that good. It was like 20 bucks, and it's pretty small. There were some cool things there, but if you go to Tokyo Skytree, I would say forego that one. Check out the other stuff. Maybe go to the top of the tower, which I didn't do. Uh, that one's probably also a ripoff, but if you're going to be in the tallest tower in the world, maybe it's worth it. I'll probably go back and, and go up there just to, to see how it is. So after seeing sumo wrestlers and a really tall tower, the only logical thing to do next would be see ninjas, right? So yeah, yeah, we want to go see ninjas. This is a sign outside the Ninja Cafe in Akasaka. Some of you may remember from one of my previous entries about Robot Restaurant. So this is just another one of those themed restaurants in Tokyo. They have tons of them. I'll probably go to some more. But the good news about this one is it was... Uh, 5,000 yen, about $50, just like a robot restaurant. But the food was actually really, really good. It was like a 
five or six course meal. They had little appetizers with hummus, and then they brought out some like chicken, and then we had pasta, and then there was meat, and then there was dessert. So the meal was actually really good. Um, I don't know if it was $50 good, but it was good, much better than Robot Restaurant. And the cool thing about the Ninja Restaurant is, well, obviously it's Ninja themed, so the, the waiters all dressed in Ninja attire, and they actually even had a ninja guy do magic he brought cards to the table and did magic tricks for us so it was a good experience um i i I'd recommend that one I, I wouldn't probably go back unless i had friends in town that really wanted to see it but it was a, it was a good one-time thing for sure and after the ninja restaurant i kind of got inspired to become a ninja but i think my ninja and sumo goals are gonna conflict a little bit i don't really see someone with a sumo body type being a good ninja, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, to think about that. Maybe I can make that work. Anyway, after the ninja restaurant, we went on a ski trip. I don't ski or snowboard, but I went because it was called the Snow Monster Festival, and I was kind of interested to see what that was. So here's some pictures from that. Here's the sunrise. This is in Yamagata, which is about a seven hour bus ride north of Shinjuku where we left from so yeah it was a long bus ride to get there definitely a lot colder and more snow than down in Tokyo but um, the I didn't really know what to expect there so we got there the living arrangements were kind of interesting we were I, I was at least with three other strangers from all over the world and we were sleeping on mats on the floor so I had a guy from Brazil, Australia, and Belgium in my room. Well, they're all cool. No worries there. It's just uh, it's an interesting experience for sure. Uh, you're starting to get glimpses of what they call the snow monsters. And really what they are is they're, they're just trees, but because they're so high up and there's so much wind and, and ice, the trees just get absolutely coated with this ice snow. And it's just so dense that it just sticks there and it forms weird shapes that and some of them actually kind of look like monsters and they have interesting shapes as you as you can kind of see here so these are all over the mountaintop and the people that were skiing and snowboarding actually you know skiing through tracks that where these monsters are on on either side of you so pretty cool for sure uh even not skiing we re rode the lifts up and were able to see all of it anyway so it was a good time um Probably wouldn't go back though unless you're skiing or snowboarding. Definitely more fun if you're if you're doing that instead of just walking around. That snow monster trip was the last weekend in January. So right after that, there is the Sapporo Snow Festival. And that was really cool. Here are pictures from that, and this is a really interesting story to go along with, so enjoy. So Sapporo is actually on the island of Hokkaido which is northernmost island of Japan so we took a flight from Tokyo to get there it took about two hours there was some pretty heavy snow starting in Tokyo on that Saturday uh, plane got delayed an hour but we didn't really have any trouble leaving I'll, I'll note that we didn't have any trouble leaving we got to Sapporo okay we'll get back to that later anyway um, Sapporo has a snow festival every year so this is the like, first week of February, and my friend David and I decided, hey, we'd go and check out the snow sculptures there. So as you're starting to see, the snow sculptures that were done by the professionals were really, really awesome. You're seeing a couple from amateurs, too. I guess they had, a, they had like a contest, so people sculpted and were trying to get voted for the best amateur sculpture, but they really didn't compare to the, to the professionals. But anyway, um, the plan was going to Sapporo that you know it wouldn't really take that long to see everything that we wanted to see so we were just going to save money on a hotel and fly in on a Saturday afternoon and then leave on Sunday afternoon and basically just stay up all night and take a little nap in the airport before a flight. So that's all well and good. We get there around 4.30 p.m. and go to the park and see the snow sculptures. We've seen them all probably by 7 p.m. Then we go and grab some ramen, and Sapporo is famous for the ramen. It is, it was delicious, best ramen I've ever had. So if you're in Sapporo, definitely get ramen. 
Anyway, after that, we decided, hey, why not go to the Sapporo Brewery? So we grabbed a couple beers there. And by that time, maybe it's like 10.30 p.m. And we're just like, all right, well, we've seen everything we wanted to see because we had already gone downtown to see ice sculptures and do all that stuff. So then I was just like, well, what are we going to do the rest of the night? So we went to a couple arcades. Uh, we went to an international club that is geared towards gaijins. And then we just went to another bar and we caught a couple hours of sleep. And thankfully, they didn't kick us out. So that was great. And when we woke up, it was like 5.30 in the morning, and that was when the party was really going crazy. People were dancing on tables to what does the fox say, and the, it's a real weird adjustment in Japan, especially coming from the U.S., where in the U.S. last call is 2 a.m., and where everything shuts down in Japan, parties really don't start until like 1 or 2 a.m., and it seems like the times are the craziest are between like 4 and 6 in the morning, so definitely the case in Sapporo. Anyway, this is downtown Sapporo, where all the ice sculptors were at, and where the bars and stuff were at, where we ended up later. So, there is, the whole thing was, was cool for sure, and if our travel plan had worked out, it would have definitely been a, a great trip. The issue was, was that on Sunday, there was a crazy amount of snow in Tokyo. Actually, it was like the biggest snowstorm in 50 years. Tokyo really doesn't get very much snow, so when they do... They can't handle it very well. But anyway, our airline, which ended up being a piece of crap airline, canceled our flight. And so we, so we had to find a way to get back home. We found out about 11 a.m. that our 3 p.m. flight was canceled. So we're like, shit, we got to go to the service counter and figure out how we're going to get home. This is the first fun part is we were just trying to leave the terminal to go down to the service counter. And there's no exit. You can't get out. We're trying to go back through the security checkpoint, and we're like, hey, we just need to go down the service counter. Can you let us out of security? Usually you would think that wouldn't be a problem. Big problem. They would not let us out. Language barrier was definitely getting in the way. We're like, hey, we need to go to the service counter. He's like, let me see your boarding pass. And it shows the gate our flight was supposed to leave out of. He's like, oh, your gate's over there. I'm like, no, our flight is canceled. We need to go downstairs. And anyway, that didn't work. Finally, we found a, a rep from the flight on the airline company. And she walked us out and down to the service counter where they basically said, hey, you can wait two days to try to get a flight out of here or otherwise we'll give you a refund. That'll show up on your credit card in three months. I'm like, well, both of those options suck, but I don't know what we're going to do right now. We went around and talked to some other airlines and they had standby flights at like 9.30 or 10.30 at night, but there were probably... 200 people already waiting, so there was no way we were going to get on those flights. So we're like, looks like our only option is to try to take the train. And taking the train from Hokkaido, which I already said is an island detached from the mainland, takes forever. But we didn't really have a choice. So we got a ticket from Hokkaido down to Tokyo. And you basically you take a regular train through a tunnel from Hokkaido to get to, to, get to mainland Japan. And that takes like seven hours. And our train didn't leave until 10.30 p.m. So basically we had to kill the whole day. And we got on the train at 10.30 p.m. Thankfully it was the night train. So we slept basically the whole ride from Hokkaido to mainland. And then once we got to mainland Japan, we were able to get on the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train, which is much faster. And that took us way more distance and only three hours to get back to Tokyo. So we got back to Tokyo at 9.30 in the morning. On Monday, after our original flight was supposed to leave at 3.30 p.m. on Sunday. And I probably got back to my actual house at like 11 a.m. Because I had to take another train from Tokyo. So, super long travel day. And, uh, just so frustrating. The <laughs> I guess this combines to the funny story of the week. But... The, the announcements in the terminal, this is this is what you just keep hearing. You hear something in Japanese and then in English. They talk really slow, like if you are speaking in English, you won't understand it. And they're like, we are sorry for the inconvenience. All flights have been canceled. We apologize. <laughs> and looking back on it now, it's kind of funny, but at the time I was just really upset. <laughs> but anyway, we got home. And the base is actually closed because of all the snow. So it ended up being a 
free day off of work anyway. So, yay! Anyway, the snow festival is cool. If you get a chance to go, I recommend it. Hopefully you don't get trapped in Hokkaido like we did. So that's pretty much it for this entry. Uh, I'll just give you an update on my Japanese. I've, I'm still reviewing the kanji that I finished. And I am now studying sentences and grammar, also with Anki, the flashcard program. And it's going really well, actually. I'm starting to actually pick up Pick up sent I can actually make basic sentences on my own now, so I'm continuing to just build my vocab, and then it'll just be practicing listening, but I'm optimistic that in a few months I'll actually be speaking fairly well, hopefully. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I'm getting a lot of help from my friend Dale, so thanks, Dale. Shout out. Uh, anyway, I will talk to you guys next time. Sayonara.